Hello, I'm Madison Molina, a 12-year-old scuba diver. When I was four years old, I learned how to snorkel at St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Since that day, I loved being in the ocean. I've been lucky to explore oceans all over the world, in the United States where I live, all over Hawaii, many places in the Caribbean, in the Galapagos Islands, off the coast of southern Thailand, and in the South Pacific. I've swum with scary white tip reef sharks, giant 600 pound marine green sea turtles, interactive sea lions, and the cutest of all marine life, the Galapagos penguins. To me, the neon and past our world in the ocean is like a wonderland, where the fish and I swim together in slow motion. I just love floating around underwater, calm and quiet, watching the sea life drift by, and discovering all the surprises the ocean has to offer. It makes me feel completely relaxed and free. But lately, the ocean has shown me a new surprise, one that tells me something is wrong. Last year, I saw a good example of what happens when the oceans aren't quite right. My family and I visited the Galapagos Islands for several weeks. We spent our first five days of the trip on a ship called the Santa Cruz II. We wanted to spend as much time in the ocean as possible. I was excited to see what I imagined would be bright, colorful reefs, teeming with a variety of fish, turtles, sea lions, and exotic corals. Instead, I found that one of the most well-preserved places on the earth was in trouble. The reefs were not vibrant with corals, and the waters weren't teeming with fish and sea life. Instead, the corals were gone, leaving mostly gray or brown reefs. Where long stretches of lush coral used to be, there were only patches of coral and those were struggling to survive. There were fish, but nowhere in even numbers or varieties I expected. I saw the same problem off the coast of Maui in Hawaii. Nestled in a protective cove with a pristine beach in the clear Pacific water, Kapalua Bay has been one of Maui's best spots for snorkeling. I was shocked at what I saw there. Berries, few corals, and only a small population of fish. The reefs were struggling to survive. They are dying, or have already died. And it's happening all over the world. So what's happening with these coral reefs? I had to find out, so I did some research, and what I learned was shocking. I think everyone on the planet should know about it. So I made this video to get the word out to as many people as possible. To understand why our oceans are in trouble, it is important to first understand what coral is and what do coral reefs do. Most of us probably think coral is a decorative statue at a beach house. Real coral, however, is much different. Coral are living organisms made of part plant, part mineral, and part animal. Coral reefs support so much life and produce so much oxygen that they are called the rainforest of the sea. And just like land-based rainforests, they are critical to our survival. Corals form together in colonies and the colonies create reefs. Coral reefs can be hundreds or even thousands of miles long and provide a home for hundreds of coral species, all living together in harmony. Coral reefs also provide protection for harbors, shorelines, and beaches. They keep large, pounding ocean waves away from shores by creating barriers that serve to break the waves and calm them down before they crash against the land. That's why they are called barrier reefs. And coral reefs play a critical role in the planet's food web. They provide food and protection for over one million species of fish and marine life. This is because corals are at the bottom of the ocean's food chain. They support food communities such as detritus and plankton, which are all essential to feed everything from sea worms, urchins, and sea stars, to small fishes, shrimp, crabs, and snails, all of which are food for predators like larger fish, sharks, dolphins, and whales. Without coral reefs, over 50% of all sea life would disappear. Can you imagine a world without any seafood? In addition to the role in supporting life in the ocean, coral reefs are critical in providing the planet's oxygen. In fact, coral reefs produce half of the world's oxygen and absorb 25% of the world's carbon dioxide created from fossil fuels. The reefs act like giant filters, absorbing the planet's carbon dioxide caused by greenhouse gases and releasing fresh, clean air into the atmosphere. Without reefs, we'd live in a world with 50% less oxygen. So without healthy reefs, the entire ecosystem of the ocean is in trouble. 
If reefs die, thousands of species of fish and marine life will die. Our food supply will be greatly reduced. Barrier reefs will disappear, leaving nothing to protect our coastline from crashing waves. Beaches will disappear. Many of the world's beaches will be underwater or unusable in the harsh ocean waves. Fishermen and boaters will be unable to make a living. Our planet's very survival will be threatened. Coral reefs are in trouble everywhere on the planet. From Florida's Barrier Reef in the United States, to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, to the Mesoamerican Reef in the Caribbean, to the Apple Reef in the Philippines, the world's barrier reefs are sick and dying. Scientists estimate that we may have already lost one-third to one-half of the world's reefs. If something doesn't change, all of the planet's reefs could be dead by the year 2050. That's only 30 years away. Reefs are dying for many reasons. Climate change caused by global warming is a big culprit. With global warming comes increasing in ocean temperatures. Corals are very sensitive to changes in ocean temperatures. And changes of just a few degrees warmer can stress the polyps. When polyps become stressed, they start shutting down. And that means the corals cannot gather nutrients or produce oxygen. If the water stays too warm for too long, corals will die. Another culprit, changes in ocean currents and weather patterns are also caused by global warming. Too much fresh rainwater stresses corals and can have the same effect on corals as water that stays warm for too long. Pollution, such as plastic and garbage dumping, fertilizer runoff, oil spills, and human waste all harm coral. So does overdevelopment along our shorelines, beachfront hotel construction, and overfishing, especially trawl fishing. Finally, tourism, and people harm coral each day by using jet skis, boats, paddleboarding, all have the potential to break corals and create long-term damage to reefs. Even sunscreen used on beaches, where hundreds of swimmers gather, can coat the corals with chemicals that block the sun and prevent them from photosynthesizing. To learn more about coral reefs and how to help save them, my family and I decided to visit a place in the world that is known for their beautiful coral reefs, French Polynesia, Located right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and just south of the equator, French Polynesia consists of 300 plus islands and atolls. Two of its major islands, Marea and Bora Bora, are completely surrounded by large coral reefs. These islands depend on their reefs to protect their shorelines, provide livelihoods and fishing and tourism, and provide recreation and leisure activities. French Polynesia was the perfect place to see healthy coral reefs and learn about what can be done to save the world's oceans. On the first day we snorkeled, we learned that even these reefs were in trouble. Because of climate change, French Polynesia's coral reefs were undergoing something called coral bleaching. Coral bleaching occurs when the water gets too warm for too long. This causes the corals to become stressed and eject their algae. Without their algae, corals cannot eat or get enough oxygen and they begin the process of slowly dying. If the water cools soon enough, polyps can reemerge and the corals will recover. But if the water stays too warm for too long, the corals will die, leaving behind just their white exoskeletons. We learned that coral bleaching had impacted French Polynesia especially hard, and as a result, many of the region's reefs were severely damaged and had died. Could the reefs be restored? Was there any way to save them? Luckily, the answers were nearby. Our first stop in French Polynesia was the spectacular island of Bora Bora on the far western end of French Polynesia. Bora Bora is like a little gem, a small jagged island surrounded by a wide reef, which creates a beautiful turquoise bay around the entire island. Taking in the whole reef from the plane, it was easy to see the importance of Bora Bora's reef. Our hotel had a man-made lagoon with a lot of coral, but the coral looked different. It was growing on what looked like a big cage. Although it looked odd, the corals were still attracting fish, so I was anxious to jump in and explore. But before I could go snorkeling, I had an appointment with Dennis Schneider, a marine biologist who works on Bora Bora. Dennis introduced me to something called Biorock. Biorock is a man-made system that attracts polyps and builds coral faster than Mother Nature can. It is amazing to see how it works. To build Biorock, 
They first create an iron frame. The frame can be any shape or size, so they can make all kinds of spheres, grids, and blocks. For fun, they even make frames that look like turtles, trees, fish, and hotel logos. Next, they give the frame an electrical charge by attaching it to solar panels or another power supply. Then, they place the frame in the ocean. Calcium and magnesium are attracted to the electrified iron, forming a limestone coating that is very similar to natural coral. Polyps attach themselves to the calcium frame, and new coral colonies form very quickly. And as a bonus, bio-rock corals are more resistant to warm waters than corals that grow naturally, so they can better survive global warming. Using bio-rock, Dennis and his team have rebuilt coral in many spots around Bora Bora. As you can see, bio-rock creates beautiful reefs that are virtually the same as corals that occur naturally in the ocean. After Bora Bora, we visited Morea, a beautiful island of 16,000 people, just a 20-minute ferry ride from French Polynesia's main island and capital, Tahiti. Morea is known for its spectacular reef, which encircles the island to create a beautiful, protected sanctuary for fishing, swimming, boating, and water activities for all kinds. The island is covered in lush, tropical vegetation, making it one of French Polynesia's most beautiful islands. We heard about a group called Coral Gardeners who were working to repair the damaged reefs around Morea. We decided to pay them a visit to learn what they were doing. Coral Gardeners was founded by Tituan Bernicott when he was just 18 years old. Tituan grew up on Morea and spent his life swimming, surfing, freediving, and fishing in the crystal blue ocean around Morea. He told me that the ocean was his everything. When he saw the damage that was occurring to the reef, he decided to quit college and go work to repair the reef. So he gathered his childhood friends and formed a non-profit organization called Coral Gardeners. In three years, the Coral Gardeners have planted over 10,000 corals. And what we do here at Coral Gardeners is two things. The first objective we have is to raise awareness, tell the story of the reef worldwide. I want everyone on this planet to know what the coral is and how important the ocean is and make people want to get involved, like you. And the second thing we do here at Coral Gardeners, we are restoring coral reef. So we bring new life to the ocean by planting corals. We collect broken pieces of coral, put them on nursery during a period of couple weeks and then we plant them back onto damaged reef with the crew here at Coral Gardeners and we plant over a couple thousand uh, corals this past two years. Our dream would be to have branches of coral gardeners like reef restoration project all around the world and have a coral gardeners ambassador like her talking about the project, raising awareness and grow a big community. These two organizations found different but highly effective solutions to save coral reefs. But not everyone can start these organizations. So I asked Tituan and Dennis, what can everyone do to help keep the planet's reefs healthy and strong? They had great ideas. Don't pollute the oceans with trash and plastics. Be careful not to break parts of corals with snorkeling fins and boat paddles. Use reef safe sunscreen. Don't let your pet use the ocean as their bathroom. And support reef saving organizations and participate in adaptive coral programs. Finally, use only natural fertilizers and insecticides. There were two ideas that I really liked. Become a coral watcher and become an ambassador for coral reefs in your community. Here's how they work. There is a worldwide organization called Coral Watch. It is run by scientists at the University of Queensland in Australia. Anyone can sign up and learn how to collect data on coral health while you are snorkeling or scuba diving using this kit they send you. You then download an app, collect the data next time you go snorkeling, and send it to the scientists in Queensland to track corals all over the world. They have scientists in 78 countries analyze the data so they can identify areas that might be in danger and take action before the damage gets too severe. Another good idea is to become an ambassador. Organizations like Tituans encourage kids to help them spread the word about the importance of saving coral reefs. As an ambassador, you can share what you know with classmates, your school, and tell everyone you know about what's happening to corals. You can also attend seminars and help other children learn about the problem. You can also hold fundraisers to help coral saving organizations save more corals. It's a lot of work, 
but you will be able to help make our planet a better place, not only for us, but for future generations. The people I met and the things I learned in French Polynesia truly left me inspired. I hope this video has inspired you to learn about the challenges facing our oceans and take action now to help keep our coral reefs healthy. This problem is too important for us to leave it unsolved. Let's join forces and make a difference. Our futures depend on it. I'm Madison Molina. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you again next time.